feels good. It just puts a smile on your face. I don't care who you are. I mean, the greatest compliment I can give it is it's a nice driving car. You just want to drive to Vegas. You just want to go somewhere in this thing. And you're going to go fast. And you're going to go fast. <laughs> episode of Jay Leno's Garage, a very special car today, the 2020 uh, Ford Shelby GT500. This, this thing has 760 horsepower, safe to say the most powerful Mustang ever released. It's pretty incredible. I'm seeing it now for the first time. It, this has sort of been under wraps. A lot of you watching this are probably seeing it for the first time too. We'll drive it, uh, we're gonna go over it, we'll analyze it. We have the man behind the car, uh, one of those real car guys that happens to work for a real car company. And when you get those two things together, this is what you wind up with. Uh, Dave Persick. Dave, come on in. Now, you're the head of icons at Ford, right? Yes, sir. So, okay, yes, sir. so the Ford GT, all the, you get to do all the cool stuff. All the cool stuff. Yeah, see, that's great. You're not denying new window wine mechanism. No, you're doing the cool stuff, yep. which is really good. And he's not like one of these PR guys. That's right, Jay. He knows his car inside <laughs> and out. He can tell you every facet of it. Uh, you're the guy that helped uh, coordinate the win at Le Mans. Yes, sir. The Ford GT. Yeah, okay. So the highlight of my career doing that. It is. I imagine it would be the highlight of anybody's yeah, career. It was. Uh, very cool. So let's start. I'm not sure where the beginning is. It is the most powerful Mustang. It's ever. the biggest. It's the baddest. It is the most powerful Mustang that okay. we've ever produced. Okay. So we're we're pretty sure that Carroll Shelby would be quite proud of this vehicle. Oh, I think he would be. And, uh, you know, it's so funny for the last couple of years, the Hellcat was... Yep. The ICA, 707 horsepower. This is 760, and it weighs less. Yep, and 625 foot-pounds of torque. <laughs> I mean, this thing has got it all, Jay. All right. Seven-speed transmission? Yeah, dual clutch. Dual clutch. Oh, it is a dual clutch. It's a dual clutch. Okay. We did that by design. No manual. Oh, that, okay. You can't shift as fast as this can. I, I, I don't doubt that. <laughs> uh, all right. Tell us what the engine is. Yeah, well, let's start up front. I mean, uh, engine is the 5.2 liter but it's cross-plane crank versus the GT350, which right. is a flat plane. Right. Uh, so we went cross-plane, put a supercharger on it. Right. We've got a heat and supercharger on there, uh, and it's aluminum block, right? And that's producing that 760 horsepower. Now, see, I love my 350R Mustang. It's got balance. It revs to almost nine grand. Right. I mean, it's so funny to me to hit 6,000 and realize I've got another 2,500 at least, and it's still pulling hard. So I'm anxious to drive this. I. I uh, how does she go around corners compared? Is it is it heavier at the front end? Is it well the the front end is a little heavier because of the supercharger for sure. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, most of the GT 500s in the past, even when Carroll Shelby started started this whole thing, they were straight line machines. Yeah, they were straight, I, straight I, line monsters. I think that's fair to say. They yeah, were right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but this one is different, Jay, and you're going to notice that when we drive it today. This one goes around corners, so this one handles quite well. She's yeah. very well balanced and predictable. More than anything, she's predictable. So you can set it up in the corner and you know exactly what it's going to do. You've got a lot of power, so you know, if, as you lay into the power, it's not going to snap on you. It's not going to do something weird. It's going to do uh, very predictable movements, and, and that allows you to drive it uh, really fast. I mean, I love the fact that the touches that you normally see on Ferrari, Lamborghini, Pagani, whatever, are on a Mustang. Carbon fiber wheels? Carbon fiber, yeah, we have a carbon fiber package, which comes with a carbon fiber wheel, a carbon fiber wing. Mm -hmm. And Jay, we did a GT4 Mustang. And that wing comes right off of that GT4 race car. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the carbon fiber wing, you got the dive planes up front, we're generating a lot of downforce. What kind of downforce do you get with it? So we've been able to neutralize the front, right. which is really important. We don't want lift, right? But we've got a lot of cooling. We'll talk about that in a minute. So we've been able to neutralize that. And in the back, Jay, we're producing 550 pounds of downforce. Okay. <laughs> She's right. planted. Now, the front end does look a lot wide, like you put a lot more air. How much more air? surface area pulling in than the 350. So we are twice as big in the frontal opening as okay. the 350. So not only does this front end look menacing and, and it looks like there's 760 horse, but it's really functional. So right. twice as much opening and we're using all of that air to cool this thing. We've got seven coolers on this machine. Wow. Two yeah. radiators and coolers on, on, you can imagine, on the diff, oil cooler, everything. Cooler on the diff as well. Yes, sir. Okay. All standard. And then okay. that, that uh, hood uh, vent you see there is the biggest one we've ever done on a Mustang because we're trying to, again, extract that air, get it in, get it out, and make sure we don't have lift in the Right. Front. I mean, that, in the wintertime, that just looks like a great defroster for the windshield. <laughs> exactly. just, just that heat com coming out of there. <laughs> Something that just made me smile, those are the biggest discs I have ever seen. <laughs> they almost look like giant drum brakes. They look like some giant truck. 
so you know from your GT350, you've got great stopping power. Right. So we had to obviously up the ante here. I mean, we've got a lot more power and we have to stop. So that is huge, as you're calling out. It's The swept area, Jay, is about 20% bigger than the GT350, mm -hmm. and the thermal capacity that it can handle is about 30% more. Right. So we still have the six piston Brembo's up front and the four piston Brembo's in the back, just like on your 350, but we have much more braking capacity on this machine, and you're gonna need it. Pretty amazing. Can we, let's open the hood and let's show people what yeah, we're dealing with that. here. So we've got hood pins up front, Jay. I was gonna say, that's great. Normally that's something you just kind of put on aftermarket. <laughs> that was, because uh, you can imagine the lift, again, that we would see with this product. Wow, so you get a lot in there. Yes, sir, it is packed in there. Um, you can see that big supercharger up front. And Even then, more impressive, as opposed to just a bar. Yeah, you I mean, like the design work on this? Well, I like this massive brace. You know, this reminds me, my favorite piece in my um, McLaren F1 is a brace like this that goes across the back and it's all cut out and it's meant to be lightweight and, and strong. Right. And this gives me that, that same, I mean, this is pretty, obviously it's done this way because you get the least amount of weight with the most amount of strength. That's correct. This is magnesium. And, oh, it is magnesium. Yeah. And when you tie the, uh, the towers together, the stiffness that improvement that you see is amazing. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> Pretty, pretty, pretty impressive. <laughs> How many pounds of boost are we get in here? About 12 pounds of boost. Obviously, and it runs on pump gas, obviously. It does, yeah. Yep. And it meets emissions and, and all of that. That's, I, I always say this because it makes me smile all the time, but years ago, when uh, the, the Dodge Viper came out, the salesman told me, you know, this is 400 horsepower. You'll never see that in a production car again. Those days are <laughs> gone with, you know, so you better buy this thing now. And yeah. of course I fell for it. You yeah. know? And, and just through science and technology, the fact that you're getting 760 horsepower with mileage twice as good as you would have gotten back in Absolutely. the day. I mean, it's, it's, it's really a testament to you guys. It's, it's amazing. Is this a cold air package here? It pulls it in from? It does pull it in, yep. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, we got brake cooling ducts that are standard and, right. and, and uh, you know, to cool those big brakes. Uh, and then, like I said, there's two radiators packed in here, that, you know, a charge air cooler. I mean, it's, this thing is loaded. There's not an inch of space left. You know, there. I never understood how necessary these cold air packages were. When I put my 511 Roush motor in my 66 Ford Galaxy, I didn't have a cold air package, and it was like 103 one day here in L.A., and I just stalled on the freeway. Yeah. And I, what happened? And I opened the hood, and the rush of heat that came out, it didn't burn me, but it was like, oh, my God, it's unbelievable. Right. And I realized what had happened. I was sucking so much hot air, right. the engine couldn't breathe anymore. Exactly. You know? So we made a, we used our 3D printer and made a carbon fiber piece to pull air from, and it cured the problem. Exactly. You got to get that yeah. cold air. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's fun to see. And this is obviously four valve. Uh, yes. Four, four valve. valve twin cam. Yep. Uh, again, these are all things that used to be so exotic, exotic right. and only available you know, on the most high-end, expensive European stuff. So you got four valve, twin cam, <laughs> supercharger, it's, and it's in a Mustang. That's why we're, you know, we're excited about the product because we're bringing all that technology into, a, into the Ford showroom. Well, it's so nice to see that it's not, they're not selling the stripe package or some <laughs> cartoon character or, right. I mean, that's what they used to do. You know, you used to have a marketing guy who come, well, it's got the thing on it. Wheels and stripes. Yeah, wheels and stripes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a real high performance car and it's, it's uh, really exciting to see. Okay, very cool. All right, let's, let's, let's close this so up. So we've got that dual clutch transmission that we talked about. Right. Uh, and then we've got a carbon fiber drive shaft. Mm -hmm. So that's standard, reduces the rotational right. mass, right? So okay. about eight pounds less than what a, a steel drive shaft. And the carbon fiber can take that kind of torsional. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, wow, okay. Now it's not a dry sump, is it? Uh, no. No, it's not. not a dry sump, okay. Nope. Cool, cool. Uh, let's see, what else have we got? Uh, look, let's at this, look at this wing back here. Yeah, the, the wing is pretty amazing. Well, I've got that wing on mine. And it looks like you've got adjustments here. You it's do. adjustable? Okay. It is adjustable. Okay. Absolutely. But obviously manual adjustable. Manual. Right, right. right. Yes, it is so if you're power. taking it to the track, all right, very good. You know, people have no idea, especially here in L.A., I see people put wings and they put giant, 
you know, and it just, what are you doing? They have no idea. They have no idea. I mean, there's a real art and science to getting a wing exactly right. Yes, sir, and balancing that between the front and the rear. And when you get it wrong, it's actually worse than having no wing. It can wing. be dangerous. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It can be dangerous, yeah. Take a look at the exhaust system. So the exhaust is <clears throat> an exciting part of this machine. Wait until you hear it start up. And we've got an exhaust valve in there where you can go everywhere from quiet to really loud. And really loud on this one is really loud. Yeah, you know what's interesting, because I was thinking about that, because sometimes it's sitting in traffic and guys pull up, dun, 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 you know, it's like, and I'm going, boy, I'm a car guy, and I'm really annoyed at this guy. Right. And the fact that you have this quiet mode, so, you know, leaving a driveway at 6.30 exactly. in the morning, that exactly. kind of stuff, you hit the quiet mode, the neighbors aren't all going nuts on your head, or you live in a townhouse or something where people get mad, you know, it's great. It's stainless steel, is it? Uh, yes. Okay. And we do two things, right? We have the, uh, you can change the exhaust mode yourself, or we have many different drive modes in this machine, right. and the exhaust mode changes with the drive mode. How many modes do you have? Probably like what, rain? So, so we got normal, right. sport, right. track, right. drag, right. and slippery, which is the rain that you mentioned. Okay, okay. Yep. So five different modes. So I imagine sport is the one that's most fun for just driving around town. It is. I mean, sport uh, takes that DCT transmission and it, and it makes the shifts a little bit crisper. Yeah. Um, it, it changes the exhaust note, changes the pedal mapping. I mean, it really is a very nice uh, mode to be driving around in. And sure. how about track? Should people drive around a track on, on, on the well, street? I have to it? say no. That's for track use only. Oh, for track use only. Just for the only. official documentation. Right. I got uh, okay. Some of us might elect to do that, though. But it doesn't get, does it get, it doesn't lower down on track. It does it? not lower down, but okay. what, what track mode does, though, uh, again, your shifts now are optimized. They're lightning speed. I mean, right. quick as heck. Uh, and your pedal map is more linear, which is what you would want to be able to modulate on a track, right? Um, and so we change many different parameters, you know, for the track mode to really make this thing perform. We give you a little bit more yaw in track mode so that you know you can hang the back end out a little bit right, more. Right. But, but stability control is still on. You can, right. you can turn it off yourself, but right. I mean, in track mode it's still on. Well, I always don't know why, guys. My favorite thing is go on YouTube and the guy turns off stability control, <laughs> he's the car, cars and coffee, he nails it, goes, and he hits the, exactly. he, he hits the guy. You I, know, I've you seen go, it happen. I don't mean to laugh, but it's like, guys, you know, learn how to drive the car. I mean, 760 horsepower is unbelievable and it's so much power and it can overcome those tires like that. Oh, like that. Yeah. Yeah, I always tell people, listen, even the professionals, if if, if the, everything is right, they can leave the, the stability control on and right. still drive fast laps. Right, right, right. Right. It should never interfere. No, no. And, and <laughs> so leave it on. That's what I mean. Most people, want <laughs> stability control actually helps you do better laps. It does. Yeah, unless you're the world's greatest Exactly, driver. exactly. Yeah. But unfortunately, most guys think they are. Right. Well, so that's, that's the trouble. <laughs> that's the trouble. Okay, let's see what else we got. Uh, let's, let's, anything new or different on the inside? Well, on the inside, because we have a DCT transmission, now you've got uh, those big paddle shifts up there uh, because that is the only way to, to drive this vehicle. So it can either be driven in automatic mode as, as DC, or you can go into manual mode. Right, right. 12 inch digital display is right. unique on this vehicle. Okay. So we gotta, you'll see that when you drive it later on. So it's different than the standard Mustang? It is. Okay. Oh, so different? Well, different than the GT350. Right, okay. Different GT350. Yeah. Okay. What tire pressure you run? 32? 32 seems to be the standard across across the board. It would be different if you're on the track, obviously. Right, right. right. Um, and you can see the carbon fiber package on the interior as well going all right. the way across. And it's all real carbon fiber. There's no, nothing's fake on a Mustang. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's not <laughs> carbon fiber look exactly or, or kosher style exactly you know? hey, some yeah. people do that yeah i know, that, I know. It's, this is the real deal you'll see there's no rear seat on the track package jay oh is, right okay which is what this one is so for weight purposes i mean we take the rear seat out but the other when you get the gt500 without the track package you would have a rear seat okay this is new ford performance is that a new well i don't so think i've seen that logo that we've been doing that for a little bit now uh, so if you look at the Raptors or you look at you know any of our performance products, you're greeted at the sill with that Ford yeah. performance logo. Well, I remember from the 60s, the first time around, I was a teenager when it was total performance. That was the that was the the key, and I I still have the catalog where you could get the the dual quads with the yeah. really cool air cleaner. You Very know, cool. had the Thunderbird logo yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah. And the, yeah. You know, but Ford, they sold a performance catalog with all these extra pieces, yep. which made it really, really kind of cool. Uh, all right, let's see what else we got. Obviously, antennas right here. 
Yep, you uh, got satellite radio, you got everything. There's even a technology package, Jay, where you can upgrade to a, a B&O audio system. Yeah. You know, you get all of the, 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 the niceties of technology that you can add on to any of the packages, whether it's a track package or, uh, or any of that. The, the other thing that we have for the first time um, is we're offering another limited, though, painted on stripes. So okay. you know the Shelbys have always had stripes, right? But they were always decals, right? Right. Uh, and, and for the first time ever on a, on a Mustang, we're going to offer painted stripes, which well, uh, customers are lining up for. Well, Mustang has almost become its own brand, hasn't it now? In I a mean, way, in, in a, a way. In a sense, it's like uh, it's almost like a standalone. You can almost have a Mustang dealership with everything from the, you know, from the V6 to the you know, to the four cylinder. It's one of the most iconic brands in the world. I mean, to me. You know, one day they dropped off one of the four-cylinder ones. Oh yeah, the 306 horsepower, yeah, yeah. which makes me laugh because it's the same horsepower as my 65. You know, and now we're getting yeah. it out of a. Four and I thought to myself, well, all right, I'll, I'll put a couple of miles on the four-cylinder one just to let the guy. I love that thing. It's great. It, light. Yes. Handling. I mean, it was a whole different sort of it feel. It is. It was. It was fun to use all the power all the time. Yep. I mean, these are great, but you use the power all the time. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't. I mean, no, it, was, can't. it was fun just to, you could just take time to enjoy the tack going across, yeah, you know. Absolutely. I mean, it, it was really a, a, it's a really a wonderful package. And it's, what, about 30 grand, something yeah. like that? Yeah. That's pretty amazing. And it surprises most people when they get in and drive it. Oh. Yeah, people are surprised that it's 306 horsepower. Yeah. I wonder, wonder, if it's 306 deliberate because that's because that was the most powerful Mustang you could get back in 1965. Yeah, no, that wasn't delivered. We tried to get yeah. everything we could out of that. Motor, yeah, because that's, that's where it ended up. Because I remember when you bought it from Ford, it was 271 horsepower. When you got it from Shelby, it was 306. Mm -hmm. And then you get the Paxton blower, but most was the stock 306. Yeah. But all right, this is. Uh, I'm really anxious to drive this. Can we? Uh, can we take it out? I think we should. Cool. Let's let's give it a shot. Let's go for it. What do you think of those Recaros? Boy, the Recaros are very nice, actually. Yeah, let's, you know, it's so funny, as much as they like loud, I'm curious to hear what quiet is like. It's well, let's, let's fire it up. Okay, let's put it in loud. Let's so we're going to get you in a loud mode here. There you go, you're in loud mode, Jay. Sounds great, doesn't it? It does sound good, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's suppose the neighbors yeah. at six in the morning. All right, six in the morning. Here we go. Wow. <laughs> that's. reason I like the Mustang is there's more greenhouse, there's more glass area. You know, so many modern cars, I guess it's for safety concerns, the sill is really high, the window is sort of like a letterbox, and the windshield is cut down. It's almost and claustrophobic. I, yeah, I almost feel like I'm uh, claustrophobic, yeah. Whereas this, there's, there's, there's a lot more area, and the roof is, is fairly high. I'm not hitting my head. Well, we work hard to minimize our A-pillar sections so yeah. that they're not blocking your you know view. and. Uh, you can see through your side mirror, you've got space there, so the visibility is huge, especially if you're taking it out on the track. Yeah, yeah. You know, you gotta not only look the part, but you have to obviously be, you have to have all the, the goods and play the part. And I think this car does it better than anything with its exhaust note, um, its, its uh, appearance, the right. power under the hood. I mean, you got it all. And you notice when we went into uh, track mode, See how your your cluster changed. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. Because now your tack is the most prominent thing. Right. And you got a 7,500 RPM redline on this thing. Yep, 7,500 RPM. She has her peak horsepower at 7,400. Yeah. When I was a kid, and I'm older than you, James Com was a movie called Redline 7,000, where he, it's a NASCAR thing, and they go, you can't take it to 7,000. <laughs> You see the, the tack going like this, Bounce 68, 69, and people are, oh my, he's 87,000 RPM, you know, it's like the end of the world, oh my God, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And now we're near 9,000 with the GT3. I know. Yeah, I'm amazed at how many high-end European supercars still have the torque converter transmission, and they always, well, it's less weight or something, but it's obviously they don't want to develop a... Well, it's, it's a lot to develop a DCT. <laughs> Steering is very nice. Yeah, it's very linear. 
Yeah, it's just very direct. There are some cars that I just, especially American cars, sometimes it, the feel it's old. I can't describe. It feels over heavy. I feel like I gotta go over. Yep. It's almost like I'm on a cam, you know. And yep. it, 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 whereas this is very nice. Yeah, it's almost like you get over that torque. So does the rack change? Does the steering ratio change or anything in track? Or is it the same? That remains the same, right? Yeah, that remains the same, but but we're we're in e we have an e pass, right? right? So we change the efforts, and okay. we can change the gain and everything. So we do change the steering, right? Uh, but it's not the actual ratio. Electric or hydraulic? It's electric. Okay. So I'm saying, so we can change that how that feels. Right, for you. right. So you're in the when you're in track mode, you're almost in a point and shoot type mode, right? right? I mean, wherever you put it, that's where it's going. And something, you know, like people watching this, they always go to aftermarket. And I think you reach the point where original equipment is as good as it gets, isn't it? I mean, there's nothing really an aftermarket guy could do to this to make it faster than what it is now without breaking emission rules or something of that nature. That's correct. That's yeah. absolutely right. I mean, yeah. we're giving you all that you can you can get yeah, unless you start I mean, breaking those rules. I'm always amazed people think, well, I'll put this exhaust system. No, no, believe me, those, it's like sound systems. When I was a kid, first thing you did was took your brand new car in and went to Ed and Al's Auto Sound and got the new, and now the original equipment stuff. Is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> it goes good, it goes good. That just puts a smile on your face, I don't care who it you does. <laughs> and, I, and I love that the Europeans and the English begrudgingly have to give credit now. You know? Yeah, they don't like to, do they? No. Well, no, but it's just sort of funny. You know, I, I get it. You know, I get it. Everybody has a certain sense of national pride. <laughs> and, you know, I, I love the fact that, I mean, this really has every feature that you would have in some exotic. You know, you've got the uh, uh, dual clutch transmission, you've got the brakes, you've got the horsepower. Well, you know, it's funny. They, they still see us as unsophisticated American power. Right. And now, you know, this is this is American muscle, but it's in a very modern way. Yeah, it really is. I mean, this is what supercars should have been in the 60s. I mean, they, they didn't go around corners, they didn't stop, but they were fast. Yep. I mean, it's so funny when you drive a 60s muscle car now, it's like walking around with a rolled up sock in your pants. It looks impressive, <laughs> but it doesn't do anything, you know? Uh, I mean, when the Chrysler Hemi came out, it was zero to 60 and 6.5 seconds. I, I remember reading that going, that's got to be a mistake. That's crazy, 6.5. Because anything under 10 was, was just unbelievable. Right, was lightning. Now you've got guys in the threes and the high twos. It's like crazy. Yeah. This car is sub 3.5. Yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> What's the rear end ratio? 377? 373. 373, yeah, that's a nice one. So with a 373 ratio and a seven speed transmission, at 60, you're probably turning, what, 1850, 1900, something like about that? that yeah, 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 yeah. So tell me about going to Le Mans. Was that pretty exciting? Yeah, you know, Jay, it was, uh, it was something that when I was asked to, uh, to be a part of going back to Le Mans and leading the team, you know, not only developing the street GT, but also taking the race uh, part of it and going back. It was a dream come true for me. And um, it, was, uh, it was a hard two years. It was just under two years that we yeah. had to develop the car and get it ready to race. But uh, I'll tell you, I'll never forget, one of my favorite stories was when we're standing at, uh, the day before the race, we're standing on pit road and Edsel Ford was standing there kind of gazing off in the distance. And I walked up next to him and I said, Mr. Ford, what are you looking at? And he said, you know, Dave, 50 years ago, I stood here with my father and we won this race. He said, and tomorrow I'm gonna stand here with my son and we're gonna try to do it again. Yeah. And I had chills, Jay, that, that, you know, and, and I just yeah, looked at him and I cool. said, Mr. Ford, we're going to do everything we can to put that trophy in your hand. Because I remember as a kid watching him, he was about 15, I think, at the time. Well, I, I know he was young. I don't know the yeah. exact age, but yeah. And we were able to put the trophy back in his hand, Jay. Yeah, yeah. Just, and we had Bill there, and we had the whole Ford family. It was, what an experience. And everybody said... <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah she pulls nicely. <laughs> well, go ahead. I mean, it's a story. No, everybody said it couldn't be done, and I'm so proud of everybody at Ford that that came together to make it happen. See, this is where it feels nice. When you're in a turn and you're on power and you're not pushing, it's not pushing, it's not, steering is not moving, it's just going exactly where it's pointed. And when you ask for that gear, it snaps into place. You know, we do something on the show called, on my other show, uh, the journalism show called Stump a Car Nerd. We, we 
take car guys, you put them in a blindfold, you put them in a car. It's, it's, I would guarantee nobody would guess this was a Mustang. I guess it'd be they'd be an Adventador or Ferrari or something of that nature. Because you just... Yeah, I mean, it pulls up so nicely. <laughs> it's great when it pins your head back in the seat. And the nice thing is, I didn't scrape coming out my driveway. It's got nice ground clearance on it. Yeah. It's, it's hungered down a little bit, but... That is the greatest thing of the Ford GT, yeah. that hydraulic lift. You hit this neck hole. You know, even on my P1 McLaren, you hold it here, and you have to wait while it comes up. Where the Ford, you hit that button. I have never scraped that splitter on that on that car. She pops right up? Yeah, I mean, it's really... That's really terrific. That's the, that's the single greatest feature. I love that part of it. Yeah, it's also cool. It just shows people how the car... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never use the launch control. I always feel like I'm, I'm twisting the drivetrain. To me, I, I like a roll. I run like this, and then I just nail it, and I go. You know, to me, I always feel like I don't like to break my machinery. I like, I like to use it hard, but not. I always feel like I'm abusing it. I don't know why that is. Is that just my imagination, you think, or no? Well, I mean, I think it depends on, you know, our launch control system that we have. So when you go into track mode, we automatically engage launch control for you. Right. And it really optimizes uh, your launch. No doubt that a standing start, especially with a car with this much horsepower, when you launch it, puts a lot of, a lot of uh, wear and tear on the drivetrain. But right. we test it. We make sure that it's durable. So yeah. uh, I say we've got launch control. Use it. We know so much about a car, either real or imagined is how it makes you feel. And this makes you feel, it's just very nice. It tracks very nice, it doesn't, I just remember in the 90s and the 80s, cars just kind of doing, the, you're just kind of wandering a oh, bit. Yeah. And, you know, nothing was, like I said before, the steering felt overhead, I, I couldn't, I turned the wheel and I felt like I had to give it a little extra to get it to go. You know, it, whereas now everything is nicely balanced, a lot of people I saw sort of trash electric steering, but I think they've got it now. Oh, I tell you, you what. Know? It's like when hydraulic steering first came out, oh, there's no feel, it's terrible. You know, you don't want that in your car. And they got that to the point where it is. And I think electric is there now. We've worked hard to get it dialed in so it feel, you feel very connected and you feel yeah. it's very real. And it saves horsepower. Sure does, sure does. And you know, Jay, you're talking about driving this thing and you know, if, if I switched even a quiet mode exhaust now and I put you into normal mode, you could drive this thing all day long. Right, right. But it's fun when you're in track mode. Yeah, I know. <laughs> track mode. I mean, it feels like a sports car and it feels obviously lighter than it is. Yeah, but she does feel light. And you know, you've got those carbon fiber wheels right now, which make a big difference. Yeah. Uh, it makes it feel a lot more nimble on its feet. That's but what I love about American manufacturing and engineering, you know. Whether it's Mustang or even Corvette, the value for money for horsepower and handling is so much better than it is for you. In Europe, it's still a luxury. You know, here, it's down to the point where, and this is an expensive car, obviously, but it gives a working guy something he can aspire to, you know? Yeah, it's expensive, but you know, Jay, this one starts just under 74000 Right. And, um, you know, it's it's crossed into supercar territory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you can option this thing all the way up. You're still not over 100. And if you put this up against, you know, you're going yeah. cars two and three times that. Price. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's, I think it's fair to say it's supercar territory. <laughs> I mean, uh, 760 horsepower. A McLaren is it's called the 720. It's 720 horsepower. Yep. Uh, I think Pagani and a lot of them uh, are, are in the same range. Not not this kind of horsepower. And all tractable. <laughs> Hear those pops? Yeah, I love it. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we do that on purpose. And you can take a beating, you know, and you get this. Thing. What is the warranty on these? Oh, it's a standard warranty that we yeah. have before. Yeah. The five year, whatever it is, 50,000? That'd be uh, three year 36. But everything is fully warranted. I mean, we test the heck out of these things. We yeah. go to racetracks around the country, we yeah. put professional drivers in them. Billy Johnson, who is uh, one of our uh, drivers at Le Mans, you know, yeah. in the Ford GT, he was one of the development uh, drivers in this project. So uh, we had a lot of fun with Billy, and Billy raced his Mustang. <laughs> I mean, I just love how it changed, you know? I mean, 
it all used to be marketing guys. I remember when disc brakes came out, somebody at one of the major manufacturers said, well, you landed an airplane, well, you just, they're fine, the drum brakes are fine. You know, it was just that get it out the door mentality. But now, you know, the car business like, like the restaurant business, if you don't have an A in that window or an A plus, nobody's going to go there. You know, and you know they don't have to. There's a lot of choices. That's to me. Customers are so much more sophisticated now than they used to be. You know, they can, they know what. I mean, the fact that mufflers and and exhaust systems last the life of the car now. When I was a kid, that was unheard of. My dad used to go to Midas Muffler every two years to get a new muffler put on under the warranty. You know because they just rotted out. Now it lasts the life of the car, which is which is unbelievable. Yeah, it's it's come a long way. I mean, the greatest compliment I can give it is it's a nice driving car. You just want to drive to Vegas. You just want to go somewhere. And you're going to go fast. And you're going to go fast. <laughs> I get myself in a lot of trouble with this. I had a, I had one over the weekend. I thought, oh, yeah, yeah. I got to get it back. <laughs> Try the brakes right here. How's that? Those are brakes. <laughs> How are those brakes? <laughs> Were they good? <laughs> Very little pedal. I mean, not much pedal pressure at all. I'm not stomping on them. You feel like your foot's connected right to that, right to that caliper. Yeah. Right. You know, in the old days with the anti-lock system, you feel a throb. Or you'd feel like people go, hey, what's going on? You know. Yeah. But it's so part of the system now. You know, it's funny because people think cars have gotten so much louder, but engines have actually gotten quieter. The only reason the exhausts are louder, you're only allowed so many decibels. What is it, 92 or something? I don't know what it is. Yeah, it depends on the state. Yeah, but yeah. so many decibels. Yep. So the fact that the quieter you can make your engine, the louder you can make the exhaust. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, we also have the active exhaust, which allows us to then right. give the customer what they want when they're off off the road, you know. And it works on the other side, the quiet mode, as we talked before. Right. Now we can actually quiet everything down so you don't have to upset your neighbors or sitting in a light. And the exhaust mode button is right here, so you can do it at any time you want. Yeah. Well, you can imagine when you're out on the track with this, Jay, and one of the things, as I mentioned earlier when we were walking around, um, this car, this GT500 turns corners, and you can right. tell with some of the stuff you've been doing. Right. So when you're on a track, you can really set her up in a corner and and uh, power power out of it and, and feel really good about uh, the balance and, and the control. But you know, the real sales thing is how it makes how it makes you feel, and it just it's just fun to it's just a nice driving car. Because there's some cars I get into, I just yeah, I feel uneasy. I feel I'm sight lines are blocked. It's just just little things, you know. This is just very, I mean, mirrors, windows, a pillar, everything nicely situated. You know, you're not nervous driving. You can see everything you see behind you. Yep. That's the only thing with my 350R with that wing. It's like somebody, you know, when you, when, when you, when you, the old days when it'd be a dirty picture, they have the black bar over yeah, the guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's and so you look out the window and I go, oh, there's a giant black bar following me. <laughs> you know, whereas this wing is actually, it's good. It's good. I can actually see out the back window. So what do you think? You think Carroll Shelby would be proud of this one? I think he would be. You know, it's so funny to me. Mustangs, I think, have come further from 2015 to now than I did probably from 2000 to 2014. Yeah, that's because fair. I remember when they first came out with the independent suspension, a lot of griping, all the drag racing guys. We like a live axle. Yeah, there was but, a lot of it. But, you know, using science, using technology, you can get everybody what they want now. You can you can you can get the power to the ground with independent suspension, and yet you can go around corners. You know. Yep. And when I got my 350R, I felt sorry for guys who bought 2014 Mustangs because this next gen, it was just so different, so much improved. Oh no, yeah, you know? absolutely, absolutely. Oh, the independent rear suspension has really enabled us to just transform the oh, vehicle. Oh, it's uh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and it was key back in 2015 when we did that. Um, because we, we took Mustang Global. Uh, right. And having an independent rear suspension was extremely important to right. having a global offering. Right. Well, the funny thing to me is when you drive something like this in Europe, people go crazy because to them it's an exotic. It's got a, you know, I always leave when the English go, 
and the Ford Mustang has an enormous 289 cubic inch V8. <laughs> That's a big block. Right. You know, it was a big block in England. Right. You know? Yeah. That was a huge size engine. You know, in a world of 1.3, 1.4 liter, you know, five liter, six liter motors are just unbelievable. Dave, thanks for bringing this by. I love the passion. I love the fact that you're like a kid who just finished customizing a car and you brought it to show me. Because, you know, I love that. I think you, you have the greatest job in the world. You get to drive this stuff. You get to go to Le Mans. You develop it. it, it it's your, uh, your team and your guys putting this thing together. It's really, it's really exciting. And I think the thing that makes it work is the passion that you guys have. It's not another product. It's not, you never call it a unit. You know, it's always a car. Yep. And it's always an exciting car, you know. And you're always striving. I mean, I thought my 350R with 525 horsepower was the end of the world. And it, it's amazingly fast. And this is just 760. It's just, it's just unbelievable. Dave, thank you very much, Jay, my friend. Thank you. Great, great pleasure to have you here. And, and thanks for bringing this. And, uh, this is pretty cool. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm.